What's up Blasters? We are here with our very first ski resort review of 2023. I know what you're thinking. 2023? The year everyone was worried about snow conditions in Europe? Lucky for me, the French Alps had quite a bit of extra snow early in 2023, so most of the Alpe d'Huez domain was skiable in the third week of January. With 250 piste kilometers to explore, the Alpe d'Huez domain is definitely not small. An experienced skier or snowboarder can easily enjoy themselves here for a full week of skiing. Now, I'm used to skiing in Austria and I've always heard that French reds are comparable to Austrian black runs. So before actually skiing here, I was a bit worried that the overall difficulty of the region might be a bit high for a mixed group of skiers and boarders. However, I feel French and Austrian blues and reds are pretty much equal. French black beasts, however, are on an entirely different level. They're not black because they're extremely steep. They're black because they're annoying and full of inexperienced skiers who are in your way. My gut feeling is that these newer skiers are not actually used to skiing ungroomed beasts, which is pretty much how I would sum up my experience of skiing French black beasts. Everyone's in your way all the time. The famous Saren run in Alpe d'Huez started off with a freezing cold wind. A few moments later. Continued into an ungroomed newbie graveyard and ended up with a horrible skiing path where all the borders were just walking. Color me unimpressed. Luckily, the reds and blues were a very different experience. You have a very large area to explore in Alpe d'Huez and most of the blue and reds are actually fun to go down. For those who want to try their hand at some deeper snow, but aren't quite ready to dive into the forests or go fully off piste, you'll quickly find out that the boundaries of the pistes are optional in most cases. Overall, the Alpe d'Huez Resort is a decent combination of difficulties and enjoyable slopes. I would rate the beast score 4 out of 5 stars. Most of the lifts in Alpe d'Huez feel dated. Many of them are old, large cable cars that take 50 plus people at a time. Or they might be old gondolas or old chairlifts, but note the keyword old. The hourly capacity of all of these lifts felt quite low, so compared to most of the other resorts I've been to, I feel like I spent a lot more time on the lifts, either queuing for a lift, riding a lift, but not skiing. Some of the lower areas in Alpe d'Huez, like Vosjani, for example, had more modern lifts, but obviously they only get you so far and as soon as you get higher up the mountain, you encounter all these old lifts. I would score the lifts 2 out of 5 stars. If you're more into après skiing, I would say Alpe d'Huez only has two locations on the mountain. On one hand, you have the very relaxed Caban venue, which is perfect for chilling when the sun is out. On the other hand, you have the local La Folie Douce franchise, which is present in most large French resorts. You can enjoy some cheesy EDM music and an overpriced beer until 4.30 in the afternoon, after which you get to slalom between a whole bunch of people who may have had a few too many. This contrasts heavily with the upper ski scene in Austria, where the upper ski usually happens at the base of the mountain, but goes on for much longer in the evening. So if you want to finish your days by destroying your liver, I feel like you'd have a much better time in Austria. However, if you prefer popular music to the typical upper ski hilarity in Austria, you might prefer France. In general, I would rate the upper ski in Alpe d'Huez 3 out of 5 stars. All in all, I would give Alpe d'Huez a 3 out of 5 star rating on the Blast scale.